In this spreadsheet, we have a range of data showing information about members of a band. So you can see, uh, based on the values in row one, the different information that we have for each band member, such as their name, what instrument they play, and what class they are, freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. We can then take this range of data and turn it into a table. Go to the Insert tab, and then click on Table. Now, as long as you have your active cell somewhere in the range of data, it should automatically select the range for you. Uh, if it's incorrect or it doesn't do that, you can uh, type in the correct range here. Uh, you'll also want to make sure the My Table Has Headers checkbox is selected uh, so that uh, those headers at the top of the table will be considered headers and not part of the data. Um, if you uncheck this, it would put uh, auto headers at the top of your table, column 1, column 2, column 3. So you can see that it's much more uh, efficient and helpful to have the actual descriptive header names that we have here. So now our data has been turned into a table. We can see that it looks quite a bit different than what we had before. Uh, the first most obvious thing that has changed is the color formatting. Uh, this is just a handy tool that we have in the tables uh, just to improve the appearance of our data. We also have a new uh, menu up at the ribbon. We have the Table Tools Design tab, and I'd just like to go through quickly the different options that we have here. In the first group, we have the option to uh, change our table name. Right now this table is uh, defaulted as Table 2 and if we click right in here we can change the name of the table. Uh, it does need to be all one word and you cannot have any special characters in here but I'm going to name the table Band Roster. So now when I refer to the data from this table, I'll refer to it as band roster instead of that long range that we had earlier. In the next group, the tools group, we can summarize with a pivot table and we'll talk more about pivot tables in the next video. We also have an option to remove duplicates. In this table that we have here, uh, each student should be unique. We should not have a student in here more than once. So if we want to check that and make sure we don't have any duplicates, we can click Remove Duplicates. And I'll just click OK. And I see that two duplicates were found and they removed those extra records. In the next group, we have an Export button. We can export this data to SharePoint if we need to do that. In the Table Style Options group, we have several checkboxes here. Two of them are checked off. The first is the header row, and what that does is simply make that first row in our table a different format. The banded rows is this alternate fill color that you see, so every other row is a different color, which just makes it a little bit easier for us to read across the row. We also have the first column option, and that just changes the formatting of the first column so it stands out. Last column would do the same to the last column in our table. And banded columns, if we turn that on, I recommend that you also turn off banded rows so you only have one or the other. Uh, but banded columns would make every column a different color so you can easily read down the column. And I'll just put this back to our default here. We also have uh, one last checkbox here, which is the total row. If we check that off, it puts an extra row at the bottom of our table. And that allows us to quickly summarize any of the data that we have in our table. So for example, I'm looking at the scholarship amount column here. And if I click right in the total row, I have a drop down menu that appears and then I can choose a different summary statistic depending on what I want to see. So let's say that I wanted to show the sum of the scholarship amount. I would simply click on sum and then that information would appear in my total row. 
So a total row is a very simple way to see this kind of information. You simply check it off up on the menu and then use the drop down menu to select which function you want to show. To turn off the total row you can simply uncheck that. So that's a very helpful way uh, to find just some basic summary uh, information about your table. Uh, the thing that uh, most students have trouble with is just remembering where that option is. So remember to go to Table Tools Design and that it's just a checkbox on the menu. Lastly, under Table Styles, we have lots of different color formatting that we can use to change the look of our table. So if we wanted a different color, we could do red or green. Okay, and there's lots of different formatting options there. So I'm going to leave it as blue. Now that we've finished looking at some of the menu options under the Table Tools Design tab, let's talk about sorting and filtering our data. Sorting our data is just rearranging the order. We could, for example, put the data in alphabetical order by last name or order by scholarship amount. When you filter data, you are just showing certain portions of the data that you would like to see. For example, showing all of the trumpet players or all of the freshmen. You may have noticed the arrows next to each field header at the top of your table. These are called filter arrows and they can help you to both sort and filter your data. So let's say we did want to sort by last name. We would come over to the last name field and click on the filter arrow. We can either sort A to Z or Z to A. Sorting A to Z is also known as sorting in ascending order and this will give us alphabetical order as well. Let's go ahead and click that option. You can now see that all of the band members are sorted alphabetically by their last name. If you would like to add a second sort, the easiest way to do that is to come to the Data tab and click on the Sort button. We can see the first sort that we placed on our table. The last name is sorted by its values and the order is A to Z. To add a second sort, we can simply click Add Level and then choose our second sort. In this case, I would like to start a brand new sort. First, instead of sorting by last name, I will sort by instrument. And I will sort alphabetically by instrument, so I'll leave the order as A to Z. Next, I would like to sort by the student's class. Under order, I can use the drop down menu to choose either A to Z or Z to A. However, when we're looking at the class, if we were to put it alphabetically or A to Z, we would then get the results freshman, junior, senior, sophomore, which is not in order. So instead, we'll try to create a custom list. You can see that there are a few custom lists already created. To add a new custom list, we will go to the List Entries box and simply type in the values that we would want to show in order. So I will start with freshman and I will type freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Click Add to finish your custom list. Now, under our Order drop-down menu, we can choose to show Freshman, Sophomore, Junior, Senior, or the opposite, Senior, Junior, Sophomore, and Freshman. In this case, I've decided that I would like to show the Seniors first. So I'll choose Senior, Junior, Sophomore, Freshman, and click OK. My table is now sorted by both instrument and class. It is sorted in ascending order, or alphabetical order, by instrument, and in descending order, by class. 
showing the seniors first. We are first sorting by instrument, so you can see that all the instruments are grouped together with the baritones first. Then within that sort, students are shown by their class. So for each instrument, it shows the seniors first. We can also filter our data, which will only show certain portions of our table. Let's say we wanted to also filter by instrument. You can use the filter arrow to do this as well. Click on the filter arrow for instrument and go to text filters. You can see that we have several options here. Equals, does not equal, begins with, ends with, contains, or does not contain. We can also create a custom filter. In this case, let's show only clarinet players. So I will choose equals since I'm looking for exactly the word clarinet. In this menu, it is asking us to show rows where instrument equals, and then we can type in clarinet in this box here. We can also use the drop down menu to choose the same. Click OK. We now have 7 of 73 of our band members showing. Let's expand on this filter. Open up the filter arrow again, and you can see in the second half of the menu here, there are checkboxes for each instrument. Now you don't always want to use these checkboxes, only when you have a few items or you're looking for an exact match here. For example, we were looking for clarinets, and there aren't too many instruments showing here, so we could have just checked off the clarinet box. Let's say we also wanted to show flute players. I could come down here to the flute checkbox and select that as well. Now our table shows both clarinets and flutes. This information is still sorted from our previous task where we have it sorted alphabetically by instrument and then within each instrument it's sorted by class 